Yo, yo, yo. Oh, my lights turned off. What up, what up? Good morning, good morning, GMG. What day is it today? Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. Look at that. Another beautiful day to have a beautiful day. I got my co-host in the house, OSF Mando. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Vibing. Sunny day in Lisbon. Pardon me? Sunny day in Lisbon. Another beautiful day in Lisbon. You didn't post a P... Who showed the PNL screenshot? Oh, Mando's. I know, dude. I know. I know. Oh, the- no! I know, I know, dude. Mando flashed. For those of you who don't know, I'm not gonna get into details, but Mando flashed a, a PNL on that Solana long that he put last week when we hit eighty dollars. I mean, he literally said it on the show, he's like, "I'm long here," and he tweeted it too. So he shared the alpha with everybody. Um, don't even need to go on his friend tech anymore for that. It's out there on X, uh, and uh, and he just PNL flashed on no, the. In the no, one, no one, no one valued it on friend tech anyway. You, you. <laughs> Fuck it you, you sound hurt. Are you, are you, st- are you still on front tech? I was definitely hurt by that. I, are you still on front tech? No. no. Okay. I, I, own, I am on Farcaster as of last night. Actually, I actually have to go jam there this morning. Um, I made a Farcaster. Actually, I also invited Dan Romero to come on the show ne- uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, do you know Farcaster is doing 10,000 back to buy DAU? Pretty pretty good. 10,000 active users per day? Doing well. Yeah, I think you can trade to coins in it now, right? Like I saw that that was a... Like you can trade to uh, sell meme coins. Dude, on. there's a lot of stuff going on. I have to say, because uh, you have to download this app called Warpcast and everything. Uh, anyway, shout out to 5511, avid listener, holder, friend of ours. Um, just message was like, yo, no one's got your username yet. Like you should do it before this pops. And so I did it last night. Thankfully, no one had taken my username. Usually this is like something that gets sniped and then sold back to me <laughs> at a premium. Uh, so I got that. Anyways, I'm on Farcaster for those of you who are on there. I don't know. It's like really interesting. There's a lot of like founders on there and everything. It could be like sometimes get away from the noise on X. Not a bad idea, but I'm going to give it a shot. I know I said like other platforms I'm not sure about, but once they hit a certain amount of users, it becomes worth your time to go and check out. So I'm really curious about it. Anyways, that's not a topic today. Definitely not. Um, and you know, Dan, if you're listening to this, you definitely should come on the show one day and we should interview you because it's a really impressive founder, actually. Just a 10 person team or 12, something I read on this timeline. So, um, some really good stuff going on there. And you're right, a lot of trading, a lot of different channels. Uh, you can send points or tokens to people if you like their posts. The like button is not a like button, it's a GM button. I love that. Um, and there's a lot of cool little things on there. I, I only spent an hour on it total, so I'll, I'll learn more tomorrow. I'll, I'll probably take you guys through my journey uh, on Farcaster and see uh, and see how it is. But you should definitely go get your usernames, lads. Uh, that's you know just just to have that in case this thing is actually the one that that breaks out. Anyways, uh, to down the show today. Today we got boys. We got to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. Okay, we have to have a conversation about a few things. Um, we don't have to go too deep, too crazy, but I definitely, I definitely want to hear you guys' opinions on, on a few things here this morning because you seem to have safe and sound opinions uh, very often. Anyways, so today on the show, uh, today, today, market report as usual, the crypto rallies into month end. Uh, ETFs now own 3% of the total Bitcoin supply, uh, which is pretty crazy. I started a tweet about this, Mando, today. I saw Zach Vol of the Tapper Wizards tweet about that yesterday. So it's uh, that's a uh, talk about a supply crunch that could come in the coming years. Uh, it's really impressive. Of course, again, Jupiter is tomorrow, literally two minutes before the show started. We got more updates to be able to go and check your claim, how much you're, you can claim and stuff. Ovi, I'm assuming you're on the same boat as me. We've done seven figure volume on Jupiter. I keep, I keep checking it. I keep checking it just in case, like, just in case. Name, and I'm just always like, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're sorry. You have no, there's three more addresses. Huh? Nothing to claim, but it's okay. We're still going to max bid. Uh, Jupiter, we love you, meow. We just came in too late. I was using radium in 2021. Um, fucked up. Uh, so, so I should have used Jupiter, but it's okay. We're going to participate in the next seasons, right? Right. Anyways, Jupiter is here. Raul Pal is like bull posting the shit out of Solana. So is Santi. Actually, I, I retweet some stuff. And everyone, man, they're all between all there. Santi, between like us, like going crazy. Ansem, Merv, uh, sorry, Mertz, Ox Mert. Um, and then you have like Santi, Raul, and Andrew Kang. 
Like, it's like, and then you have even like case, right? Like, it's like everybody's just like going hard at this. So it's really exciting, honestly. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so that there's a lot going on there. But it's also not just like, they're not just pumping the back to pump the back. There's some very interesting like use cases being uh, shown and put out there. So let's talk about this for a minute here today. Um, especially ahead of Jupiter e that is happening tomorrow. So it's a huge event for um, for the space here. Um, and then uh, you didn't cover it yesterday, but may as well cover it today. Let's talk about founders in the space a little bit. And the, this was a conversation I started with Grail. East, you know, going off on 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 the Valhalla founders, Alex Lynn. Um, I know it was meant to be on the titles yesterday, actually. So let's talk about it today. And then we also saw on the back of that dingling uh, that came after another project, which he owned a you know large uh, part of. Uh, in terms of assets, and I think he said he sold them all. Um, and you know, in an act of like, I don't want to say it like this, like an act of rebellion, like to you know, call out like the founders in a way. And so it seems like a lot of whales, I guess, or like large buyers are starting to speak up on, on certain projects. So interesting to see. Um, but Binance also, Binance fighting its own bags. I mean, Mando, I'm gonna go to you for that once time comes, but um skyark 125 million dollar nft men binance wrote a whole thread about it saying that you know seemingly that they're not uh too happy about that as well so that's kind of on the back of the the, the topic before this and then last but not least nft roundup across all chains um you know bitcoin solana and east you know the quantum cats mint did not happen yesterday <laughs> I got to tell you guys, while doing work, I had the Discord open on the side, and it was so funny. I was talking to Udi last night. I was like, did I feel bad for you, but thank you for the laughter. And he's like, were you hating on me in the Discord? I'm like, hell yeah, I was. It was hilarious. Uh, but it was just just a lot of you know memes and a lot of fun stuff. I don't know about you guys, but my money's gone. Uh, so I, I, I'm hoping a cat appears. Uh, but <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. Um, and again, goes back to what we always say, all three of us, Mint Day is the worst day. When you're a founder, like there's no worse day than mint day, honestly, because from there on, it's just smooth sailing if you know how what you're doing. But mint day, like it's just crazy. Uh, so that happened. Um, and uh, obviously, like, you know, uh, Magic Eden launched again, Magic Eden again. It's like we're not even trying. We don't have a partnership with them. They just make the headlines all the time. Uh, Magic Eden's multi-chain wallet goes live to the public. So there's been a lot of codes being passed around for the last few weeks and months. But now it's live, like cross-chain uh their own wallet so it's like really like the wallet actually curious about what you guys think of the wallet biz because it seems like there's a lot of wallets out there now uh and so it's becoming a very competitive um industry within the crypto uh currency uh ecosystem and everything so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what that develops so and as usual we are giving away a thousand dollars per show um i got the money now so i'm gonna be ready to, to send it out uh we had three winners pri previously three four four I forget, man. Yes, it was the, I'm sorry. Yes, it was the fourth one. Today was the fifth one of $1,000. So shout out to Robit for doing this with us. So all you have to do is follow FOMO Hour, F-O-M-O-H-O-U-R on X. It's on the stage right now. You can tap on the space, on the on the icon, the logo, and and and, and follow it. Follow Robit.com or you know, Robit, C-O-M. That's their, that's their X account. And then what we're going to do different today because our last tweet was so botted, we can't use it anymore. It's like bots keep winning. And obviously we keep like having to struggle at the end of the show. Uh, so basically bottom right, there's the purple box. Just retweet that tweet. Just retweet the space. Nothing else. Make sure you follow the accounts because we are going to do Twitter pickers so you follow it. But just so you know, retweet the one that I posted. It already has uh, 73 reposts. So obviously, you guys are understanding the assignment, which is awesome. Thank you very much. So retweet that. And you know what? Drop a little GM while you're at it. Uh, and feel free to always comment your thoughts live on the show uh, if you have any at all times. So anyways, 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 long intro this morning. But why don't we get this party started with a market report? <laughs> Who is the man, macro daddy of the land? Can you dig it? Is it weird that I still do not know who, which song that is? Until Me neither, yeah. I'm like, what do you fuck. mean? You guys have such until, a different jingle. I'm, like, until have, halfway through, uh, I, like, I have to like sing it in my head to realize like who it's going to be. Dude, <laughs> like, it, is, it is a surprise every time to me. Um, oh, you know I'm happy that I surprise you every time. Like it's both of you, you know. I love to hear that. So, what's up with the market, Mando? Tell us. Tell us. You're flashing PNLs in in the FOMO hour chat. It's got me worried. Uh, what's happened? Yeah, uh, the, I think global markets have gone full manla. If I'm honest, um, we still have the Fed tomorrow. Um, I think the meetings already started today. Um, and we have some big tech earnings, but tech was strong yesterday. I think. Nasdaq was up like one percent. Um, uh, broadly, we've we've just kept ripping. Like people, people are expecting now a dovish situation across central banks. Um, as we spoke about yesterday, the Fed is is 
um, it's not, it doesn't really matter. Like whether they cut rates uh, in March or in June, it just doesn't really, like they are going to be cutting rates with inflation where it is right now. I think I saw Raul Paul post about it again today, just like down to like 1.7% like um, on the true inflation measure. So I think we're about to see um, a period here of, of reduced um, interest rates and probably pretty quickly given how high they are versus um uh, but, but how high they are versus uh, where inflation is at. So strong markets overall. We've definitely bounced from a weak um, start to the year. It looks like at the highs across the board. There's some worries about China, but nothing major. Crypto, crypto. We're obviously heading into month end as well. Like month end tomorrow, it's it's a big culmination of um, a lot of risk. Um, but we hit yeah forty three and a half i think it yeah. was maybe even forty four rough nearly um this morning uh and eth eth's starting to catch up slightly so we're kind of up about three percent both on bitcoin and eth um eth is back above two thousand three hundred Solana again is up at 106, but it was a bunch of different altcoins that have really, really ripped. Um, you have a lot of the AI coins ripping. Two reasons for that. Um, Vitalik put out a, put another blog post out this morning um, about the same time that I posted Man in Minutes about the uh, the future of AI and uh, Ethereum. That basically got all of the um, AI coins um, ripping. And then you also obviously have the Apple uh, Vision Pro, which... Yeah, people have related in various different ways to how these AI coins are moving. So um, the big ones there are like Tau, Render. Um, those ones are up big today. And then you have some of the kind of hot chains. Let's say Sui's up again. Yeah. Se, um, Se is up 10% on, wow. on the day. Um, so just a strong period for those sort of coins like you would expect, like people have been talking about for a while. Um, big 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 moves i think se is back up to close to you say it like that yeah. this is fun okay se. i thought you were uh, borderline you yeah okay. i'll just i'll stop myself there would that be borderline racist how i said it is <laughs> I, 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 okay my words okay okay go on please even <laughs> from continue continue Classic. say it's a mixture Classic. of us and chinese dev so me Sims, saying what was the opinions are your own thingy it, uh, on the board can you please, Sam, just put the thing that Mando's opinions are his own. Classic None of Mando. you guys, nor oh, the wait. show, nor rug videos. I have no idea who made that. I'm thinking of Sui. Where's Say? Who are even the, who are the Say devs? They're Korean. Like, what do you mean? We DM them. We're going to get one of the founders on the show. Uh, oh, yeah. they Anyways, so like, Tao's up 30 uh, points, man. That's Dan, pretty. Dan Edelback, he doesn't sound Korean to me. No, uh, it's it's multiple people. We messaged yeah, one of yeah. them. Um, got an answer actually, which is gonna be really cool. So Obi said it was Korean. So yeah, uh, he's no, that was the Beanie narrative, bro, and you fell for it. <laughs> Obi, Beanie's yeah, been man. tweeting that it's Korean pump. He's right. Not... No, he's not, bro. He's trying to. God. Okay. Dan, Dan Edelbeck. Um... <laughs> yeah, Korean, right? <laughs> the famous Dan Edelbeck. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's spelled like E D dash E L dash B E K, right? Yeah, uh, dash Kim. <laughs> da whoa, whoa, whoa. How is that racist? Like, oh, that is it's not. It's not. Whoa. It's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Obi's having fun this morning. Anyways, so on that, talk to me more about, like, at all times. Look at, there you go. There's Sims. There's Birthday Boy. He says, at all times, hosts' opinions are their own and not representative of the show. Of He's Red Guy, great. of Crypt, of Rug Radio. And speaking of which, happy birthday, Sims, in the studio down there. We see you. We love you, man. Uh, I want to see. Let's let's get. Let, I want to see some hundreds in the audience, man. You know, Sims is one of the people. <laughs> thank you, mate. I love that. Um, Sims, you know, Sims is one of the reasons that we 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 managed to show up every day and do this with you guys. He picks the topics for us in the morning. He sets all the articles. He like prepares the studio. He screams at us because we're not in the studio by ten twenty nine in the morning. Uh, he makes sure that we're on time with our topics. He'll scream at us if we're late on the topics. Uh, he also helps us set up all the robot shit. So, you know, chat to Sips. Give him a follow. I want to see some happy birthdays in the audience for our boy Sims. Anyways, back to the market, Mando. Uh, I, just, so we have I have to say, I just love one of these comments, which is by Endo Kenji. I was hanging with Dan in Seoul recently. Cool guy. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a, <laughs> I don't even know if that's a joke or not. But, like, that is... 
speak. I have to say, though, our YouTube – and by the way, we broadcast this show live every morning for a newcomer. So every morning we're live on X and on YouTube, the Rugby Radio YouTube. We're also live on my account from where we're usually uh, all the boys. Like, we all post it. Uh, but anyways, um, the YouTube comments are usually gold. Um, so, yeah, today's going to be a fun show, so we better get along with it. Uh, so what's up? Market-wise – it's ripping. Everything's going high. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about the Jupiter airdrop. People it's saying it's the biggest airdrop ever in wow. crypto. Um, and the other big thing is obviously what's going on in the ETF. So the ETFs are just, I think we saw 250 million net inflow yesterday. Fidelity alone is now outweighing GBTC outflows. Wow. Um, Fidelity has basically been seeing 100, 100 million to 200 million of inflows every single day. Um, and people are saying now they're getting pulled up about this because... Um, obviously, you have low fees for the first few months. So people are saying, oh, well, actually, you're going to see huge inflows now um, in, for those first few months so that people don't have to pay the fees. So I don't know. But there's been a lot of bullish takes on the ETF over the last 24 hours. There's been some other bullish stuff going on. Um, some news about some of the airdrops. It looks like the StarkNet airdrop is going to be coming in February. That's going to be another huge airdrop. Huge. Um, they, they also announced their collaboration with Celestia, it looked like, yesterday. Wow. Um, you had the DIM airdrop, yeah. which was another huge airdrop. I think Pudgy's got around $7,000. Do you know that each Pudgy got three E's? Because people like myself that hold Pudgies did the claim. So they gave it all yeah. the unclaimed stuff. I love that they did that, by the way. Yeah, um, that'll be that will happen with all of these. Um, if you remember, that's how like happened with optimism. That happened. It will happen with all of them when people don't claim they like redistribute them. And then if you hold dim and you stake it, you get another airdrop. Like this is airdrop season is is really uh, picking up. But the number one focus is the Jupiter airdrop. They did announce today some details um, just before we went live on the show about like how that's going to be distributed. Yep. They've been very vocal about like investors are not really getting tokens. Here. No, there is no, no, there is no investor yeah. token. Like that's, he made that very exactly. clear. Like he was saying that there's no VC that got tokens because he, and he was saying, not that he hates VCs and stuff like that. He just wants to make it like, he's like, this is not how Ju Jupiter is going to launch its token. Right. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So yeah, people are getting, I mean, I, I think I saw easy. What's it easy put out today? I think it's, <laughs> he's getting built up. Um, he's getting pulled up. He's the face of Solana. He said, <laughs> so like, right now, obviously people are talking about it tra it's trading in the gray, we would say, or trading pre-market. Um, and it's trading around seven and a half billion. People are saying that like circulating value is coming out at already around 1.35 billion. If this goes to 5X, it could go to 6.75 billion. Um, like people are getting super bulled up about how how big this airdrop is going to be and also how it will trade on the break. Every single exchange that I know is trying to list this coin, right? Every single exchange. So, and none of them have got the coin. <laughs> so you're going to see a huge bid come in from exchanges on that first day. Every single one is now geared up to try and list it. So it's going to be wild. Expect it to trade around a lot. Um, obviously, we've, we've been talking about how to trade various different things on the back of it. Mm -hmm. What's been going on in meme coins? It feels like the main thing in meme coins at the moment is they're running back all the the, the, the stock tickers. So GME, AMC, they've both had a big run. GME did a five X overnight. I'm so I annoyed. I, I missed that too. one because I, I was. It just seems so obvious to me. It's six million. It's now at thirty million, um, and a bunch of the other like every every meme coin, every meme meme stock that you were trading in 2020, 2021 is <laughs> becoming a coin. Is now a coin. So, oh, is there a Bed Bath and Beyond next? <laughs> is that 100%, like just, just follow Wizard of Soho? He's in all the fucking second tier ones. So, um, yeah, like that's the that's the new thing going on. And all the other ones, like the when token got a lot of listings, it's gone below 100. It went back to 170 right now. I'm pretty sure. No, I just saw a tweet this morning. I don't know. I can't keep up right. anymore. It's when's a that, lot. It's like 120 or something. Oh, is it? Okay. When is at 70 million right okay, now? Okay, got, so. got it, got it. Got 70? It. Oh my Everything God. got decimated because everyone's waiting for wow. Jupiter. Yeah, you're right. It's 71. Everything, because, but Jeez. the thing is the anticipation of Jupiter, right? Like if you saw even last night, I was up till later and like, you know, Solana started running and then Whiff was running with it to 350 and then just bounced right back. I don't think Jupiter is a negative, negative thing. I think people are just underestimating the life cycle of coins on Solana. <laughs> but I don't, like, think it's, I don't even mean that in the negative like light. It's just it's say, normal for people to take their bag and and get ready ahead of Jupe because everyone's bullied like bulled up, right? Like you're saying. 
Yeah, but I think Jupiter's a bullish sign. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's what's taking these low. I just think what we're seeing right now is a life cycle of a meme. Yeah. On ETH would be like a month is is happening in like 3 days on on Solana. So like be super careful if you are in Solana meme coins like it yeah. might feel good for a, like a day or two and like we've seen like let's go through it. Like when was it 170 now it's now at 70. Jimmy is now doing this move, so it's gone from five to to thirty. Who knows what happens there? Whiff went all the way up to three fifty last night. Four four, but was it four fifty million? Now that four, one's yeah. held up okay in this world. Win was at eighty. Now it's down at fourteen. Whoa, uh, yeah. I I still think it's due personally. Like I, I think I, you agree had some, I think you've had some mini you've had some mini cycles in between then, but like I think everything. Yeah. I think people are like worried that Jupiter's, people have seen that when 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 came, it took when, liquidity when, when. away. From, when, when. Yeah, it took liquidity away from all meme coins, and then that's happened in the past before. So I think people are worried that that will happen with Jupes. I think it's like you're seeing that already play out now. Um, and I think the last cycle of these meme coins, yeah, some of them are very short, but some of them are longer than you think they are. I think. Um, and so yeah. I think I don't know. We'll like, see. Like, I have a feeling we're gonna rally on meme coins. Like tomorrow weekend. before even like before even yeah i mean if it doesn't rally by the weekend then it's like fucking you gotta get out of all that shit but i have a feeling you'll see it happen much more quickly than than before because i think people are worried about this it all thing. meme coins that don't catch a bid post airdrop yeah. because yeah. I mean, that means like that, that nobody has interest in them after they get their stimmy it's like that tweet i said yesterday i said when profits will flow to dupe and mm. that's literally happened and like so many people hated me for saying that because they all own when but guess what it's down 50% now on a day. So yeah. I think the next of- stage is like the Jupiter rally will cause a soul rally and we're seeing the soul rally now. And yeah. then I think there'll be those the profits will be there and they'll flow back into other things. So yeah. will they not just flow back into a new meme? Co- this is fucking new meme coins every it could, day. It, it could well be a new in your narrative. It could well be a new meme. I completely agree with that. And that's why I think you have to be really careful with the meme coins you pick. I think yeah. some have some have lived through mul- multiple of these mini cycles. Some of them yeah. die in mini cycle. And I think that's where you have to be careful. But yes, it could. There, there will hundred percent be a brand new meme coin that will be timed right after Jupe, and that will do like a ten x, and yeah. that will be the one. And people will be holding onto some other meme coin. There's a new ten x like, every every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like I feel like if I know these, I've known these meme coins for so long. But like they, like Harambe is thirteen days old. Win is twenty five days old. Whiff is only two months old. <laughs> Whiff is two months old, and it when feels we like that, we got that. We got that in December, December. right? That yeah. was fairly just, newish. It tells you about like the timeline here. The yeah. shit is like spinning up and spinning down, and like just be super careful in that world. NFTs feel a bit, bit more stable, in, even in this environment. Like we've always been. Grind, I like NFTs. Yeah. yeah, they're just grinding higher. But like um, this, this meme coin cycle is one to you can make a fortune on like there's no i haven't seen anyone be able to make as much money as they have in some of of these meme coins but you can also get absolutely or you can also lose like a lot of the people that make a lot of money meme coins give it all back the week after oh yeah yeah, because they'll they'll roll into the next one it's easy money it's like again we were talking about this yesterday the casino like you make big at a table most Mm. people don't just leave the casino with the gain right i mean including I mean, I've done this multiple times where, like, I got a nice little hit and then, you know, give most of it back. Just, you know, such is the life of a DJ. And we do have, you know, speaking of billionaires, um, we have Sobi on stage. What's up, Sobi? Here he is. What's up, fellas? Just trying to get my steps in. Listen to the boys talk. <laughs> trying to get my steps in. <laughs> trying to get my steps in. I love that. Sobi, what do you, what do you, what do you think? I mean, you, you actually, you have been following the Solan ecosystem forever. So, like, how do you feel about, you know, Jupiter Airdrop coming coming on tomorrow? Uh, I think it's going to be similar-esque to the Uniswap Airdrop. Um, I think it's going to get people to take... What's funny is, like, a lot of these ETH heads will, like, have an opinion on Solana. Then four months later, they'll use Jupiter for the first time and be like, holy shit, this is awesome. So, man, how did you form this opinion without using it? That's really interesting. I feel seen. Are people going to rotate their Jupiter into Zai? Is that what's going on? Bro, chill out with the Fed talk, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I I think, though, that like 
you know, this is obviously like mid curved, the Solana shit, but everything else kind of worked out. But uh, Solana just has a strong dev community, man. That's like the hardest thing to do beyond just building mm -hmm. an, an actual tech stack is that social layer. And I think you've seen a lot of resilience. And honestly, like Tender is a better product than Blur. Jupyter is a better product than Uniswap. I think the difference is like Solana attracts a lot of builders that come from high frequency trading or people that are just like throughput maxis versus like like Hayden Adams the other day was like, oh my God, crypto, everyone talks about the price. Like, bro, you literally got rich building a fucking protocol that lets people speculate on the price. And now that you're post-economic, you're going to virtue signal some bullshit. I, I find those things about like East culture very frustrating. And a lot of the people that lead the East roadmap, it feels like don't even use East. Like they're just dudes that did the East ICO or super rich, like have a fucking nomad visa or like live in Switzerland. And just, you can even see that from the fact that people thought like, Oh yeah, you're going to self stake your own fucking East. Bro, I know a lot of people that own a lot of ETH. Not a single person is self-thinking because it's fucking scary. So I think in relation to all those things, like the Solana, Solana ecosystem, I think is just going to keep performing well. I, the worry, though, is um, I think you're seeing this right now with like uh, points. Everyone's doing points. Even fucking NFT now did points. That's the global top for points. So a lot of people are getting farmed instead of farming. And so what I hope with the Jupyter airdrop is that these other platforms, um, you know, actually start dropping their tokens. I think that's like MarginFi, Kimono, Drift, some of these other ones all have points. And I just hope that they launch on the tailwind of the Jupyter airdrop mm -hmm. because I think that was similar to like the Gito airdrop. I was hoping that a lot of projects would launch their uh, airdrop their tokens right after because it has like a really nice compounding effect of like liquidity and how willingness people are to be risk on in the environment. And it's cool that I think the Solana ecosystem is going to get a second chance at that, but it's going to be a massive, massive liquidity boost for the ecosystem. And I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm a Solana enjoyer. Yeah, no, I, I remember you guys were, you guys launched on Solana first uh, a couple of years ago. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what goes down uh, there for sure. I mean, we've been talking about it for a minute now. And, uh, and so it's going to be, it's going to be a big day tomorrow. It's gonna be a really big day tomorrow. You can already really, like, really big next few days. I have really a question. Few days, good time. When is FOMO our launching points, bro? Never. Um, but you know, Ooh, it's fed, fed, fed back at you. Yeah, the Fed. There you go. He's like trying to fed me back. <laughs> but you know what? Like I saw someone uh, tweet yesterday. I forgot who it was. I, I just I gotta. I'm gonna find it again. But it was someone saying like the whole per like, it's like. A lot of, someone seemed to think that like doing the whole points thing across the board in crypto is like setting the space backwards a bit where like the point it was like to tokenize things and now we're just making points and it's interesting what you say so but it's like instead of like farming people are being the the participant now is being farmed and i thought i think that's pretty interesting that you bring that up and i think you're right like that the jupiter and the way they're approaching uh everything that they've done you know the team um, I don't know. I just, I just think it's really interesting that, uh, there you go. So I found the tweet. So it was, it was Alex Cougar and he said, here it is. I'm curious your thoughts here. He said, um, the crypto industry invested years encouraging businesses to replace their points rewards programs for tokens for good reasons. Tokens confer ownership are programmable and composable. Then 2023 happened and now crypto projects are all issuing points themselves. What a shame. I, it's a pretty good take. Like, what do you guys think here? Like, is this setting us back? What do you think, Sobe? I, I, I kind of like this take. So, our go-to-market for Zai when we did this, like, crazy test net was we basically used, you know, Galaxy as, like, a quasi-offer wall, if you will. And it, we had points as well. Um, but it wasn't, like, on the front end, I guess. It was, like, through Galaxy. Uh, and so... For us, we, we didn't announce an airdrop ever. And I, I guess we're kind of in an edge case of like a project that kind of grew really fast out of nowhere. But the intention was just like, we want to reward people for, you know, testing the protocol, making sure everything is working. And never once were we like, oh, wow, like let's delay this or further do this thing or whatever so we can keep getting the usage. It, I think the problem ends up happening is that like these protocols get worried about this pre-token launch 
go to market is like the only time they think that's when their users will peak. So they just don't distribute the token. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is like now when you have points, like everyone thinks you're going to get an airdrop, right? So like the overall macro of the mar- market has changed as well. Right. Where, like everyone's like farming all these different points, all these different things. I think, you know, the farmer getting farmed is really like the issue here. Even with Jupiter, like I was like, oh man, they should have done their airdrop after Gito. But the head dev is like literally in the hospital, like posting from the hospital and people are still like, fuck you, launch a token. Which I think is just very funny about how this industry works. But um, teams just need to realize like, bro, just launch your token. Like if you're going to do one, just do it. I think that's the worry is like everyone get, gets too cheeky, gets too smart and things like, like oh, okay, we're going to launch the token when the fucking GBTC flows uh, aren't ne- negative anymore. Like, dude, shut up. Just like launch your token, let it do its thing and keep shipping. That's like, I've, you know, I talk to devs all the time and then they're just like always trying. It's funny that you have people that don't, are building something, are trying to try, like, time the market. Obviously, it's different, like, launching something in the bull versus a bear. Like, a lot of people I knew were not like, necessarily launching things last year or even doing the news because, like, just no one cared. But yeah, I think the issue is. Yeah. These projects are going like they're basically looking at their usage numbers and they're going, oh, okay, like once we launch the token, if our usage goes down, it looks really, really bad. But it just means that like you didn't build a strong product. Yeah. So sorry. Like that is just what it is. I think like, and also a counterpoint to like what uh, that, that tweet is also like the points also probably, especially within the States and I guess more Western, like is like a result of like, um, um, legislation that's like being really tough and there's no real legal framework around tokenization and tokens in general and the issuance of everything. Like you all know, like there's so much stuff that you have to like set up in order to like get a token out and everything. So that p- a lot of people will go for points first for an onboarding process that people understand. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and so I think that there's also that friction, probably why most people will go to points first to see if there's actual world demand for something before like launching a token. So I guess I understand that part too uh, and why 2023 went heavy towards points. Also, mind you, 2023 was not a bull market yet. Maybe towards the end, price action started catching up to it, but definitely most of 2023 was not great uh, for the market overall. So I don't know. I thought that was an interesting thought and interesting. Last thing on Jupiter before we go on, um, OV... So on the official website, just everyone needs to be careful here. There's going to be a lot of scams in the next 24 hours. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of fake claims, a lot of fake websites, a lot of fake gold badges, blue badges on X, everything. You got to be very careful here, everyone. Like, Don't like ape into something and just run into signing a transaction and lose everything, please. But you can claim, which by the way, this is the saddest thing ever. Um, <laughs> this is like... <laughs> No, but what's this part, Ovi? You can already set up an order for Jupe in advance. It seems. Uh, wow. Yeah, I just saw that. Even if you don't, um, yeah, that might explain why we. Maybe people are already setting orders to buy it. Like, yes, sir. Look at that. Trade and set up your order. Preset limit orders or DC in advance to acquire tokens at launch. New tokens are volatile. Set a maximum price limit when trading them. So like you have an initial price is four cents and max price is 69 cents. And the max, I'm not sure how much it is, but you can already set up DCA swap and limit orders on dupe ahead of its launch. I don't think we've ever seen this before. In, like, there must be so many orders at the max price. Right? It's- and that's this, this, I was like, I was sitting here wondering, like, why is everything already selling off before this airdrop and that before this token is launched? And that makes sense. I people have al- already, things. people have already sold stuff to set orders at the, at the max. And I guess, like, the orders are probably done in, in time mm-hmm. order. So the, the soon, the earlier orders get filled first. That's oh, even, it, that's if you can even buy it then, you know, like, it, like maybe you didn't, I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, mm-hmm. they did it for when as well, apparently. Yeah, this apparently did it for when. I don't know. I like this. So people should just go and check it out. Dude, honestly, like this team is so good. I, I, I know we talk about them a lot. We'll stop once the Jupiter like airdrop happens and stuff, which obviously we have to. Like this is like what's happening right now, but it's so interesting. And they're really just killing it uh, in that front. It's really you, impressive. 
I, it just amazes me how so many people still are not paying attention to Solana. Like, this is going to be one of the biggest airdrops ever in crypto. Yeah, this is you know this could potentially be like, as Sobi said, like as big as like the Uniswap airdrop, which was huge. So yeah. like, you know, like whether you like it or not, you can't ignore that this is going to have an, no. an insane impact. Like, if this thing comes at seven billion dollars, you know, that's going to be about seven hundred million. <laughs> it's going to be well, they're already saying about it's going to be north of a billion dollars, like of like free money coming to the market. So it's just it's just a an insane amount of money and you just can't ignore it. You don't even have to like own any, any Solana or be involved in it, but you, you can't just pretend like this isn't happening because it is. Yeah. And it's the biggest thing well, to happen in crypto well, since the ETFs. It's really the biggest thing. To happen so says, like, there's, there's like, there's like five more to come, right? We have like, we have um, Tensor, Tens the Tensor fucking marketplace token. We have, we have like Camino, we have Drift. We have, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the other ones, like Margin Fi. I mean, like, Jupiter is also in multiple seasons. Like, it's not one shot. And Jupiter, so, like, this is this is the true golden age of airdrops. That's what that's what I, I would call this period right now. This is, like, I don't think, I don't know when the last period was, like, when, I guess when ETH was first oh, building. 21, e the ETH Eco had insane airdrops in 21. Like, right? And then Sobi said it, Uniswap 2020. But but these were so, so the thing is too is like these are so easy to farm like the Gito airdrop yeah. super easy to farm That's right crazy. and like these cap tables are a lot more like chat honestly too there is no cap table actually i love you so like jupiter is pretty interesting in that regard too of like there is no institutional capital that has exposure to it and i don't think the jupiter team is like the team that will be like oh yeah we'll give you an otc discount they're gonna just tell all these people to go buy in the open market. So that's like an interesting yeah. difference, I think. I, I wonder if that was similar back in the day to Uniswap. Like Uniswap was founded from a grant from the foundation, but I think Paradigm picked up Hayden Adams pretty early on. Yeah. I saw DWF tweeted about it. Do you know if they've got like a market maker in place or is it just like again, whoever the fuck wants to get involved, get get involved? I don't the way Meow was talking, like it seems like he's just going for it, and everybody's gonna fight to get involved with that. Like he probably built a project so interesting that everybody wants to be a part of this. Yeah, like I don't think he even needs it. I, I don't think, think he needs like, anything. I think said, DWF, Andre, Andre said, tweeted, did tweet, started, right? Yeah, started integrating Jupiter Exchange for our prop trading. It is aligned with our strategy to be deeply involved in DeFi and support it. I don't even know if he's the market maker. This is the thing. He's he might just be a, like a fan. Like I think no, every genuinely think he has built such a good product. Like the Jupiter team has built such a good product that everybody uses. I think like this is one of the really good examples of a very successful product. Like that's being fairly launched to everyone, used by everyone. That's gonna get listed, and like okay, maybe like there's calls, but like I I don't know, man. That that meow guy, he's he's hella transparent on the timeline about how he's approached everything. I've really enjoyed reading him. It's interesting though that like as a product, it's not actually the same as Uniswap, right? No. So like as a product, it's actually an aggregator. So it's it's like one inch. It's like one it inch. It goes yeah. to it goes to all the different um like that's why often when you trade on Jupiter, you're actually trading on like Orca or you're trading on Radium or something like that. Like it's more like one inch as a product. So it's more an aggregate, it's more like blur for that for that in that perspective. Um and it's now gonna start bringing in LPs, but like yeah, it's not actually apples for apples with with the Uniswap. It's a slightly different model. Yeah, it's gonna be a man. It's gonna be so interesting. Like I got, I'm I'm just happy to see people. Like, um, I'm just seeing people like in my DMs right now, even talking about like their dupe airdrop and the amount that they're getting airdrop, and I find it fucking sick. Like, there's going to be a lot of wealth being created tomorrow and from tomorrow on for this space, and it's freaking awesome. And I just love the fact that it goes mostly towards that community that like almost got decimated a little bit over a year ago. Everything was gone with the SBF and FTX going on. And it's like thousand percent up. And then you have these airdrops back. I mean, Gito, Sobi said it. All you had to do was what? Stake one soul to get like a $10,000 airdrop. Like, I don't know. Like, I just love this stuff. But anyways, uh, let's move forward here into our next topics uh, of conversation today. Some big ones uh, that we couldn't touch on yesterday because we we're talking about a whole bunch of other stuff like usual. But, you know, you love to see that. So this whole like founder thing in the space right now. Right. There's a lot of conversation going on. So this all started when 
um, Alex Lin, founder of Valhalla, you know, announced, you know, and I believe like I haven't followed the project much, didn't mint it, whatever. Um, you know, it seems like there hasn't been much going on for a year and then comes out and there is a um, a new air, a keyboard that they're launching and whatnot. They're trying to sell the keyboard. And then I'm going to share the screen here. Grail.eth. Grail.eth. We should actually a great exchange last night uh, together. It's funny. A lot of people thought that him and I were like fighting, but um, we ended up like disagreeing a bunch of stuff. Um, so Grail.eth um, goes, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> And then, and then, and then goes. I mean, fifteen of your NFTs to show support, and I buy more on the floor. I didn't give you ETH to build a fucking exclusive keyboard that no one asked for. You had one job, and you failed so far. You should be absolutely ashamed doing your community in like this. And so, obviously, that went haywire. Like that went completely viral. I think it was a couple of days ago. Two hundred eighty-five thousand views on the tweet. Uh, you know, hundreds of retweets, likes, etc., etc., etc. Obviously, which leads to like even more back and forth on the timeline. A lot of people uh, chiming in on that, and then. And then, and then, and then you have, um, you know, Dingling, chat, you know, collector, founder, enormous support of the space as well, who, um, you know, who, who chimed in, uh, but this time about another project, which is um, AOF first, I believe, saying that, you know, he's dumped all his assets, that's his words, uh, and that, you know, he wants nothing to do with the project because nothing happened. And then backs it also with another tweet. No, there it is. So it's this one saying, Dumped 143 AOF verse founders keys after the team's latest update, taking about a 60 ETH loss overall. Uh, I usually just let NFTs in my wallet go to zero, but teams like this that don't appreciate their community don't belong in Web3. Why even launch an NFT collection? Good luck. And then he backs it with another tweet saying, I used to hold, I used to just hold uh, slow rug NFTs to zero because I don't want to dump on the NFT holders. They did nothing wrong. But now, thinking about it from another angle, we should be more proactive in holding teams accountable. Otherwise, we'll just keep getting rugged over and over again. I mean, I went on yesterday. I had some thoughts. What do you guys think is going like here? Like, what's happening? I mean, I for me, like, I think this is more of a specific thing to the ETH NFT ecosystem for the reason that, like, the Solana NFT ecosystem is like, yeah, 2020 was some projects. Obviously, a lot of like vaporware at some point, but right now it seems like a lot of the top projects have their shit going on for for them, like Tensor, Tensorians. You look at Mad Lads. You look at a few other ones. ETH, a uh, Bitcoin is just too young to go and judge the entire ecosystem yet. Um, so, me specifically to ETH ecosystem. So yesterday I went on DGens, right? <laughs> Shameless plug here. So I went on your stuff, and I pulled up the top twenty ETH NFT projects by floor price, and this is not like. This is not me trying to like donk or whatever. I could not name maybe more than three to five teams that genuinely are actually building a sustainable business that could potentially generate like, you know, cash flow, like a positive cash flow business or anything for the matter, or a project that has done anything more than events, but that then went on the timeline. And that was Alex Lynn also said that, but we did events. Events is like a byproduct of what you should be doing for your community. Mind you, they charge you for everything in there after you paid for the event for us worth as a holder. So what do you guys think here? What is what is the problem? Is it is it an adoption problem? Is it one of those things where okay, we're gonna sweep it under the rug saying we're too early? Is it a what, what's the issue here? How come the top projects, there's fuck all being done? And honestly, like a lot I talk to a lot of founders and like I see you all like on the timeline tagging me, but look at this. I, I read a lot of it. A lot of like little projects doing much more than the top ones, honestly, and they don't care about their floor price. So what do you guys think here? I kind of want to ask you too, what is going on in the space right now? Why can't we fucking get the right shit built by the right people, right? I don't know. I think I think there's a there is so many fucking things to to, to unpack there, but um, I don't know if this is like me being slightly more cynical, but like I also think that this is like just the nature of the space that we like to gamble, like. Right. Okay. Yeah, like these big holders coming in and being like, "Oh, you know, I wish you built that." Like every everyone's kind of in it for the pump at the same time. Like there are very there is that community aspect of it, but let's be honest, like, it doesn't need to be one ETH, two ETH, five ETH, ten ETH, ten ETH. Like mm. part of that is 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 uh, just about like narratives and 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 pumps. Um, and you've seen that spectacularly get taken out even by VCs at just hilarious valuations, and they realize actually there was nothing really uh, really right. there either. So I think, look, I do love crypto and that has this, this own community. And I do think NFTs are a really good way to perhaps bring some of those communities together. But I don't know how much you can necessarily 
overly expect, particularly on ETH, where there have been no trading fees paid for any utility for for a long, long time. So you're really just going off initial mint. Um, so like so the incentive, like, like, it's a the lot incentive, of money. Going yeah, to but it. the incentive to keep it up, and like I'm just telling you, like just the way that humans are, like they often will not decide to keep it up. Like, but it's like right. even the way that he was describing that is like he's going to sell you another product. He's going to sell you a, a mechanical keyboard. Like, who gives a shit? Um, so I I think the incentives have have moved away from the ETH market. So I think you're going to see so many more of these, like projects which basically have stopped doing anything for a long, long time, then bring out another product, which you have to um, be a part of because the, the the business model broke. I I feel sympathy. I also just think there's just a lot of gambling going on. So like I... Sympathy for who? On what side? The holders? I feel, I feel sympathy on the holder side, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But I also like, I'm not sitting there like, I kind of, I kind of believe in the dingling first one, where you just, you just let it go to zero. Like it was a bet. We're not sitting here going like, I bought blue chip stocks. Like we, 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 we you bought like promises from cartoon JPEGs. So like, it's, it's, you have to understand that we're not, we're not like, I don't know. You're not, okay, you're not, but- dealing with, you're not dealing with the one percent of like entrepreneurs in this space. You okay. bought into somebody's narrative from a kind of a nobody often like don't then turn around and be like oh my god like <laughs> i cannot believe this has happened it this shit happens like you it, this is like vc investing to like mix with meme coins like you, you okay so get- you're, you're saying and i've read that a lot yesterday after tweeting out stuff like that is that the the gambling nature of the space makes it that you know it's really more centered around hype than attention and marketing gimmicks than like actual execution, right? But, you know, Ovi, I won't go to you, but it's like, how come it seems that every single time, and I'd love to be counter examples, people can p- tweet at us if you want, or in the comments, I'm reading on YouTube and X live, I'm reading live as you guys type, but how come that every time there's a project that raises an absurd amount of money, there's absolutely nothing that comes out of it? I mean, you guys sold NFTs once, not to toot you guys' horns, it was like two years ago, right? That meant for DGENs originally. You have built a lot of value back to your holders. Like as a holder, I minted you guys. I didn't even know you guys. I just minted your shit because I thought you guys were cool, honestly. Um, two years ago in 21. So I got it. Then I got the record. I got a lot of value from it. But also without insane, exp- you guys never set expectations crazy. But like now you have the DGENs finance thing. Like obviously we see like you have built tools, right? That people use. And I don't think you guys raised money. Nor did you sell a lot of NFTs. And record, I was a free mint. But then you have like a lot of projects that we hear raises like 10, 20, 50, 100 million dollars. And there's nothing going on. And this is where last night I'm like, fuck, like what's happening? Because like, yeah, we sold NFTs personally speaking on Rug Radio two years ago. But we've been showing for the last two fucking years that we're executing and at least trying to do something. And I feel like our, 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 like our space is just missing grit. Like, I don't know why. Is it because of this space? Is it this? Am I like being too critical of like Web3 and the NFT space? Like, or am I not being like, it's like my friends that are founders in Web2, they don't just fucking stop after six months of not getting likes on Twitter, bro. Like, they don't just stop building. They don't just stop. They try, they try, they try. Some of them I invested in, like they still in emails. Hey guys, like we're running out of cash. We cut our salaries. We're still trying. This is what's happening. They're not just stopping. Like they're fucking trying. And it feels like here, like the second, oh, like Alex Lynn, like, I'm sorry, but the guy's like, oh, we dropped the ball last year. The fuck you mean you dropped the fucking ball? You raised 15 millions from VC and a 0.5 ETH mint, like another 5 million. Or when Kevin Rose and Proof raises 50 fucking million dollars, like, or like another other project. What do you mean you dropped the ball? What do you mean? Drop the ball on what? Like, you can't even like, do something like I don't get it. Like maybe it's because like we're built different and we're built to just build. But it's just like even at times where I was like, "Fuck this!" Like I'm done. Like this is too tiring. It's too hard. Like fucking kept going, dude. You were there, man. Though you picked me up, I was on the ground, and then we just kept going. I just don't get it. I mean, Ovi, what do you think? You're also a founder. You're an artist. You guys have built stuff in this space. You have been critical of projects in the past, actually, on the show as well. But, like, what is it? What is it with these projects that raise an absurd amount of money? I'm not talking about the small founders. The mom and pop shops of this space that have no money, low floor prices, but they're still trying. I'm trying the big ones, the top twenty. We can't seem to get shit out of it. Why? I just, I just think like 
lots of people are very good at marketing and obviously very good at raising capital. Well, they're not good at raising capital. People are very easy to part with their capital in this space because everyone wants to degen. So I think people recognize the opportunity and come in and try and just do something and they realize they can just raise money and have a go at something and they may not well be qualified. And you know, if if you take your skill set and your background and you try and raise capital to like investors, you have to go through a lot more hurdles before you get that money. But in this space, there are no hurdles. It's just like you just fucking say market something really well and everyone just DJs into it and maybe they make money at the beginning and then the you know, inevitably unless you actually have a good idea and some substance behind the project, it just trends to zero. And sometimes I bet you some of these founders aren't even like cashing out themselves. They're like hired all these different people and all that kind of stuff. And they're trying to build something and it just doesn't work. And I just think it's because you you don't really have a business model that is a good business model. And it's no different to the startup world where like 99% of startups also fail. But you know, this space is like much more public and in your face and um mm. there's an element of building in public and you know you're in a forum which is Twitter where everyone is talking about you know these things. That doesn't always happen with like with you know crowdfunding and private investments and stuff but you know that's not to like say everyone should get a blank uh a, you know carte blanche to, co to come in and, and do this i just think some people are good and some people are bad and i think you know as it's 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 on the founders like we should uphold founders to a you know to a higher standard but it's also kind of like on the the nft DJs as well like what the fuck did you think like these guys are going to come in and like make the next disney like that's kind of on you for, for messing that up as well so I think the blame lies on both both sides of the coin, um, in my opinion. And yes. yeah, maybe there's an element of like, you know, if, if Dingaling, some people, someone will literally be like, oh, well, Dingaling holds 200 of this. Like, I'm never going to sell this. Well, like, you know, if Dingaling did start dumping all the shit, then people would be like, oh, fuck. Like, this is, I'm, I'm never going to touch anything from these guys again. I'm not going to keep holding my yeah, bags here. Or whatever. So bad. I think Dingaling should do what he needs to do because he's the one who bet bigger on these people. Like, for what it's yeah. worth. Like, he puts so much money in the ecosystem. Well, for him, like I the money he, he the money he bets, the money he bets as a proportion of his wealth is probably the same as someone who buys, you know, one or two. Only, uh, yeah, exactly. For him, it's it's probably nothing because, um, you know, the guy's clearly a whale. But people follow him. Like people, the like, alpha groups will be like, oh, like, Dingaling just swept hundreds of these. Like, let's all go in, and they all go in, and then the next thing you know, like, the thing's fucking caught with its pants down because. <laughs> because <laughs> because there's nothing there so um let's yeah. let's use an example of what happened recently like is this changing crypto undeads and nothing wrong with crypto undeads i'm just using this as a, a recent hyped mint what was crypto undeads i don't know but he gets benefit of the doubt until he fucks it up or not what i mean no one's calling it out beforehand everyone is in I it I've seen a lot of people try but i get what you mean i know what you mean i know what you mean traders and founders are in it for the idea that this can sometime, somehow catch on. Like it was really just good marketing and and some hype. And now he's got a, a apartment. But if that fails, yes, like, but like I also was there at that mint and we weren't sitting there going like, oh, no, no, there's not enough due diligence in this guy. This needs to, I, like everyone was in it for the same pump for the reveal. Mm -hmm. Like it is, um, it is, there is portions of blame here for everyone. Um, it just gets messy when then everyone realizes it's not going to work out and then everyone starts pointing fingers. I do, I'm not saying that these founders should just be like, oh, you can get away with that. Like they are clearly, um, they clearly should be, should be accountable. But like, if you see a hyped mint and it doesn't work out, like it was hyped by everyone. It was hyped by, by the community all calling for a thousand X because they wanted it. They wanted the gamble. They oh, wanted the, like, when the Valhalla thing was going on. A lot of people were pushing that. Like a lot of people. And yeah, I remember I think, yeah, that exact yeah. time. I agree that there was some fun. You know who was the only person fighting Valhalla on the timeline? Sean Bill. Yeah, it was chilling. It was known there. So like, I think, that, I think it probably right because they really defended themselves at that time. And then they've gone on and absolutely jack shit. Yeah. But like this stuff happens every week. Like even the mint, like I guess quantum cancer is a good example because they got tap root. But these these hype mints, they come every week, right? They and they are often unfound funded. It's just like oh, they've got a thousand. They've got like ether. Remember the ether mint? No, exactly, right? Like that was. I like, remember so it, but but I don't. You're right. No, in that sense, like what the fuck happened there too? <laughs> for, like there's so many of these, dude. Like it's come super hype, hype mint. Everyone's in it for like the the idea of it catching on doesn't quite work out. So all I would say is going forward, know that these things happen every week. Know that I've only ever, 
ever seen the Azuki Mint be a well, you know, that, that they've done well from a hype mint. I don't know. I don't think, like, Board Apes was, like, I go through that top 20. None of them, or at least no, the ones... Board Apes was a porno eight mint, bro. That's yeah. like, you can't, nobody can even say anything at this stage. It was like, so, fucking nothing. Just know that that's the case. Know that every, everyone is kind of responsible for it and don't go in there, like, assuming that there's going to be some crazy mm-hmm. thing expected. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah. I, I, I mean, me and OSF have this even ch- chat about like meme coins, like, uh, like you know, we've spoken about it before. Like, I think everyone is in it for me. Like, some people have a, this really, really bad view of meme, the meme coin creator, but mm. I, I also think that the meme coin, the person, the, like the second person to buy the meme coin, the third person to buy the meme coin, like, there is an everyone about this this world. Like, the the, the original creator of the of the thing we're all going to speculate on. They have obviously a tribute, like they have some blame, but everyone is involved in also trying to pump up these narratives, and sometimes it works out. So you got to accept that you're in that world. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, it goes back to Kobe's comment last year or two years ago about being NFCs being all coins with pictures. But it's just crazy to me, like when you hear about these massive raises, and I'm like, what are they doing with that cash? Like, we know what we're doing with our money. I mean, it's public for us. With we have another town hall fucking tomorrow, like we do every end of month, and we present to people where the money's going. But it's like, why? It's yeah, just, it's just, it's you're just, a like you're, you're a real business. I think we've even tried to not do, I mean, DGENs was a paid mint, but after that, we've like, we haven't even, everything's basically been free, right? Um, free on your end. But I'm not even saying that people should follow what you guys did or that what we're doing. We're ultra transparent with how we spend our money, sometimes to our disadvantage, right? But because like sometimes involving the community even too much can lead to like a, a balance of things that, can hurt, right? But for me, for us, it's worked very well because we're our community is really awesome, right? It's really smart people. They're supportive. They, they they love the mission, and they're in it for the long run. But for you guys, it's like you're right. Like also, the death of the royalty now disincentivizes you from doing anything on the long run. But I just don't understand the mints that get like 10, 15, 20 mil up front, and then there's nothing coming out of it. And then Mister C's in the comments asking the right questions. He goes, "What do you want them to build?" <laughs> he goes, "Do they even know what the people want?" Does the community even know what they want? The answer: the community does not know what they want. Most of the time, the community just wants one thing: is the price to go up, right? Like the most people that were upset about quantum casters and Discord, the people that want to mint and sell, not people that actually want to be part of the community member wars, right? So you're right in that sense, uh, Mr. C. But when he goes, "What do you want them to build?" I think a lot of the people. I think these are questions that you need to ask yourself before minting something, or forget the mint because sometimes the mint's worth it because you flip it. But like buy into something after the mint with your hard-earned money. Because those questions are often questions that the founders don't even know themselves have answers to. What do they people ask like crypto undeads? Like, what what do you, what does the crypto undeads like? Just it's just happening. It just happened last week. It's very. I, I just want, wait, hold on. People, saying that he's using right. that example because it's the newest example. Yeah. Don't, you know how it's going to happen. This happens, happens every like, week. There's just no, like, he, crypto undeads. They might absolutely crush it, and this just goes to like. I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm just saying that they had a they're, yesterday. I didn't listen, but look, price stayed the same. People liked it. And it, it we'll only see. gets we only get annoyed because the price goes down and it never really caught on. Like I did, I I agree with that. People don't even I know. I do think this time is different though. I think this time when Dingling and uh, Grail spoke up, especially Grail, who really like I've been chat just chatting with him also in private, but like like where he really spoke up is like he was so pissed because of the promises and a year of nothing. Like a lot of people in twenty three, that was the. Man, as a founder, if you fumble 23, you miss the greatest opportunity of your life to show people that you're in it to win it. Like, I remember all of us and a lot of founders around us were like, fuck it. We're going to triple, quadruple, 10x during this year, even though it fucking sucks. All our finances are wrecked. We all lost 80% of our net worth and our personal money. We all lost a ton of money on NFTs. But like, fuck it. Let's go and figure something out. Because when we come out in 2024, in 2020, 2025, people are going to be saying, hey, these people hung tight and built something in the bear market. So I don't know. I just I just thought it was interesting. We're not going to go over the next topics. I guess I'm going to push the Binance thing again. But <laughs> that's an interesting one, too. I saw Dingling write about it. And I see we're way over time. But I don't know. I just thought this was interesting. And, you know, I was talking us about how the bar is so low. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I just feel the bar is low. That's it. It's just... It just sucks. And people are like, well, why for real you want to use your you know, platform and talk about it? We talk about it. But why don't you use your platform to fucking elevate the right people instead? Like, there's a lot, you know, instead of like, ain't nobody like, you know, 
live a happy life, building a platform, calling people out. It's very negative and it gets to you. It's you from the inside. I think the best thing I would say to leave people on here is to try and elevate people around you that are doing something right and, and doing something really cool, which is what, you know, sadly negative tweets tend to garner more attention and get more engagement. You saw this on mine yesterday. Um, but um, the other way around is not like if I made right now a list of founders that I think are doing well with no money, it's probably going to get like 5,000 views. If you make a list tomorrow of grifters, uh, you're going to get a million views. So the sad truth is that social media also works some type of way. And so does, you know, society in a way when it comes to engagement and elevating that. But I, I, I think, I think there's a lot of good stuff to be said and, and no throwing events and launching a hoodie is not building. Um, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm oh, sorry, shit. man. Your event where like you fucking charge your holders for water and drinks and stuff like that. Name an event where we had people take their wallets out. And God knows we don't have funding. Uh, you know, hopefully one day, but not yet. So um, so it's not, you know, I know you guys didn't, and then you always like, you know, hustle for your events because we we kind of help each other out. So it's like, you know, it's uh it's uh, it's a lot. Anyways, just more grit. I just for me last night I was just a little sad. I just want to see more grit from motherfuckers in the space, man. Fucking come on, you know? Build it like you fucking mean it. God damn it. Anyway, should we give a thousand dollars away? I could go on for hours. Um huh, just build it give like it, you mean it. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Give it away now. Oh my god. It, but honestly, it's why people laugh at us in the space. Like, oh look, another founder couldn't even fucking build shit from shit. Like, you know, and then you have like the forecaster guy I look at and brought a crypto. It's literally like an ETH NFT ecosystem. Thing, guys like the broader crypto is fire shit being built i don't yeah. know even fucking power then it's not crypto ten thousand dollars funding is all they got to build this game <laughs> it, come on man anyways this is a broader convo maybe i'll host a separate space for for people to come and speak because there's a lot of requests and i love you all anyways time to give a thousand dollars away uh to somebody in the audience right now all you have to do is retweet the tweet above uh let's share it on the screen you have to be on twitter spaces though because if you're not on twitter spaces and i'm calling out your name I am giving the $1,000 to the next person because our goal here is genuinely to give $1,000 to our listeners. And so far, we're four for four, four, four. Uh, we've only given money out to people that have actually genuinely been here on the show live, uh, which is really awesome. And I'm really happy about that because that's what we try to do with our partnerships. My draw verification doesn't work again, Sims. Um, I guess my Twitter picker is broken. Can we use yours um, to, to pick someone to come and, to come and win this? Where's Sims at? Hey, so you're mate. giving him a last minute job to do the whole thing. I know, clip. but it's it's not my fault. It's just a, well, my Twitter. Pick, it's my Twitter birthday, pick won't work. Look. It's his fucking birthday, and you're doing this to him. I know. Happy birthday to you. Mm, mm. Happy birthday to you. Mm, mm. Let's go, Sims. You got this. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know his tweet, right? The yes, bottom yes, right yes. of the space. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's still 450 people. Um, you know, here, we're going to give you guys $1,000 a day every day for 15 days straight. Business days, that is. So we're on the fifth business days today. I see Smokey. Oh, I'm not doing... See, Smokey Lisa always clutch. Oh, wait, dude. Smokey Lisa is clutch. Smokey Lisa. I have to say, the devil works hard, but Smokey Lisa works really hard, way harder. Uh, I got it, Sims. I got it. Smokey told oh, me. I'm I'm loaded up. Okay. Smokey, John. So, in comments, talking load. about my many face. That's, that's what Smokey Lisa does. And talking about his Jupiter airdrop. Dude, Smokey Lisa is so funny. Honestly, shout out to Robit for doing this with us. Uh, you know, show partners twice a week. We couldn't do the loot boxes today because we kind of fucked up internally, so we're sorry about that. But I think Friday we're gonna double dings. So I think I think Friday we're gonna give a fuckload of money out uh, to to holders, to listeners of this show. I, we just want to give money out. We're basically Smokey's here. He listens. We're just trying to use Robit as a ramp to give you guys a ton of cash and help grow the show. Win win. There you uh, go. How many followers is from around? Uh at We're him. almost at 4,000. We need to flip Bitcoin. Just yeah. follow FOMO Hour. Follow at Robitcom. That's it. That's the goal. So there's 241 entries for today. That's good. See, it works. We didn't get bought in. And we're going to pick continue. And we're going to pick, where is it? We're under 9,000. I, I don't show the rejected here. Ready? Oh, Nick K. Nick Kolisnik. Nick Kolisnik. Are you in the audience? You got to be out here. You got to be here. He follows me. He is I'm real. Walking. He has retweeted us. He follows us. Nick K. Nick Kolesnik. Are you in the audience or I will have to go to the next person? Need to request. 
Need Nick, to look at the requests. Nick. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's there here, he ladies and gentlemen. We got him. We got him. We got him. Nick. Nick K. You got him, Bernie? Sims, get his account. We got him. Hey, Nick. What's up, man? Can you hear us? Oh, and it's a bot. No. <laughs> no, no. He's here. He's here. He's a real. He's right there. Yeah, he's right there on the Twitter space. Right there. Right there. Nick? Nick. No, it's definitely real. Uh, yo, yo, yo. There you go. Well, Nick, uh, musician, electronics tinker, Web3 dabbler, and F1 nutball. You want a thousand dollars from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Huh, a fellow Canuck. Look at that. One of my people. Uh, so you want a thousand dollars. So shout out to everybody listening. Make sure you follow at FOMO Hour. Make sure you follow our Make show. Make sure partner. you follow our show partner. Oh, you guys, oh. I'm here. Oh, hey! There Hey! Does it echo? Yeah. Does it echo? Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Sorry about that. Sorry, this is the first time I ever won something, so I didn't know how to turn on my mic. So, but, <laughs> so. oh, so thank you very much. I'm super stoked. Big, big listener of the show. So thank you. The Canadian has said thank you. I said thank you. I, I love, I, I love to hear that. Sorry, we got rug. Nick, I had to mute you just because there's an echo. Congratulations! I love that you came on mute, on mute to, to to talk. I love this for your first time. I love you, every listener. I've DM you, but you're gonna DM from Burn Dogler. Don't worry, no clicks, no links, no sign-ins, nothing. Just make a robot account. We'll cre credit you a thousand dollars. You can cash it out, or you can do what you want with it inside of it. But a thousand dollars is yours for sure. And we got the payment, so we'll be able to send out all the payments. For those of you who are not aware, we give a thousand dollars a day on the show every single day, and we show up every single day. Talk about daily news, daily topics, everything on X video. We broadcast every single Mando OSF and myself on the Rugby to YouTube and on Twitter Spaces every single day, Monday to Friday, 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another episode of FOMO Hour on Rug Radio. Let's go. <laughs>